Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the humble internet. I welcome you back for another story time of Ryman's Bizarre Adventures in Kadawa Shoujo. I nearly had gotten Don involved in this current episode, but he declined. You see, in, in case you weren't aware, Don doesn't necessarily watch this playthrough. He listens to this playthrough. It is his own personal ASMR series because he says i am literally reading him a bedtime story and he falls asleep to the sound of my voice think about that one for a while so i asked if he wanted to join in so he could fall asleep to the sound of his own voice he had declined so fuck it don start sleeping so anyway the last time that we were here we were hugged by Rin, and it caught me the fuck by surprise. Yeah! And now, I don't know, apparently uh, our boy's got a bit more pep in his step. And, oh god, we're going straight into voicing Emmy. Hey! Good morning! <laughs> How Don or anyone falls asleep to me doing voices like that is beyond me. Nice to see you back on your feet. Feeling better now? She looks fine to me, but I, feel, I still feel compelled to ask. Thanks, and yeah, I do. It was just a cold, nothing serious. Emmy laughs confidently. <laughs> as to emphasize her condition. I wonder for a moment what uh, would count as, a seri uh, as serious in Emmy's book. She seems to be eager to put the topic aside, though. Where are you going? Off to Rin's room to see if she's awake yet? Oh, she skipped the morning class? A sheepish smile emerges on Emmy's face and she gets uh, slightly flustered. Uh, not exactly. It, she, it seems that she caught the, uh, the cold that I had. Sorry to hear that. Well, she was out in the rain on Sunday with us after all. I saw her on Monday, and she was feeling a bit under the weather uh, back then, too. Oh, yeah, we sneezed on each other. That was a thing. Yeah, anyway, I'll ask the nurse for some cold medication to give her if she doesn't get better soon. She leaves for the girl's dorm. I want to go uh, with her or to wish Rin well. I want to tell her that I'm better now, too. But it doesn't feel appropriate. An unspecified feeling diverts my thoughts away. Somehow, I, I just can't summon the resolve to go there. Is this what uh, Wanako went through when she tried to tell me what she felt? Little different. Rin's out with cold. You were out dying! I think you letting Rin get some sleep is a lot better than a Wanako fucking ditching you while you were dying fuck that bitch piece of shit son of a bitch it want to go is what's wrong with this country <laughs> wow what 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 wait wait what that has to be the shortest chapter of any chapter of any visual novel i have ever gone through in my entire life Oh well. Even though I'm feeling more energetic, I still feel, uh, I, I'm still hesitant about going over there to talk to Ren. Wait, who the fuck is uh, texting me? Oh, uh, no, random bullshit, random bullshit, random Twitch shit. It's not until two days later, on Friday, that I finally gather enough cur uh, courage to enter the girls' dorm. That's the first person I meet inside for the direction and to Ren's room. I knock on Ren's unmarked door and wait. After a few seconds of silence, I hear something rustling inside the room. I start wondering if maybe I should have brought something for her. Like a can of warm coffee or some oranges. I could have peeled them for her. Well, too late now. What would the image of Rin peeling anything with her feet look like? Oh god. And there are the images. Oh god. The door opens soundlessly. It was already unlocked, and I found myself staring at Rin, who stares back at me. 
She looks like she just got out of bed, with her hair all messed up. Dude, that's how she always looks. Oh god! Oh! Oh! Uh! Hey! Uh, 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 can, can I, can, can, am I, 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 Ellipses. Hello. There's a strange, super lucky smile on her face. I'm not exactly sure why. Rune smiles so rarely that it seems to be out of place every time, especially so now, given her partially undressed state. Uh, uh, said state makes me feel extremely conflicted about whether or not this is a good idea. Her cheeks are flushed rose red, contrasting with the milky pale complexion of a person who doesn't get enough sunlight. Her forehead looks sweaty, as though she might have a fever. Um. Hi! Now what? I didn't plan anything further than this. And Rin is staring at me with those expectant eyes of hers again. Something about this situation gives me very strange vibes. Her eyes are even more uh, vacant than usual, and she seems to have a hard time focusing them on anything. The lack of clothing is disturbing, but since she herself doesn't seem to be bothered, why should I be? I keep telling myself that. Err. Uh, <clears throat> I thought I'd pay you a visit since you haven't been at the art club, and I wanted to talk with you and wish you well. Rin didn't show any sign of recognition of what I just said, making me wonder if she actually understood my words, or if she even heard them. She is probably on cloud fucking nine right now with uh, her medication. I remember this one time back in college, uh, uh, my friend Lindsay, she was going through a cold, and I had a small supply of cold medication in, in my room. So, I thinking that I was being a, smart, uh, a nice guy, I said, you know what, here, I have some extra. It turns out... She wasn't ready for the strength of them. Yeah, poor Lindsay. Uh, uh, her, her ass was knocked through a loop, but at least she didn't feel sh like shit from the cold. Like, she's sitting there in the cafeteria, hopped up on the cold medication. Look, I'm a big guy, alright? I, I am. So, what I would consider as a, a, even a mild strength cold medication is probably enough to knock out, like, five of what Lindsay was. She was that bit of a thing. So, she's sitting there in the cafeteria... Staring at her napkin. It's like the patterns on this napkin. It's like Lindsay, that was just cold medicine that I gave you. Are you okay? Yeah. So I'm wondering if that's what she's going through right now. She looks like she's 50 pounds soaking wet, so <laughs> any medication she gets. Oh, Maybe it's the fever making her groggy. She might have actually been asleep before I came over. Eh, yeah, probably the fever. I remember the last time that I had a really, really bad fever. I started muttering something about... Egyptian cats? I swear to God, Rice, that's what I was mumbling. <laughs> something about Egyptian cats holding the key... <laughs> the cure to what was making me ill. I'm a weird guy, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. She turns on her heel and withdraws from the door, walking back inside the small room. From the doorway, I can see her walk to her bed and, and half fall down, half sit down on the messy pile of bedsheets. The open doorway seems to be more of an obstacle in my mind than the closed door was, but since Rin doesn't say anything else, I step through it and into her room. We're going straight into the void. What the fuck is that? Huh. Rin is on her bed leaning against the wall. 
<sighs> Leaving the only chair in the room for me. She keeps quiet even after I sit down, so maybe she meant to invite me in, but just forgot to say so aloud? An implied invitation, as it were. Very exciting. Nobody has visited me before. The breaking of the silence draws my attention from the room to its inhabitant, who currently seems to be in the middle of a very profound thought process. Actually, that was not true about visiting, but Emmy doesn't count even if she visits. She always pampers me too much. I think she's having too much fun. I think I've forgotten how to put a bra on myself. Wait, how would you put a bra on by yourself? Uh, uh, we, we need to move on. Get your heads back, FBI agents who are, or in charge of monitoring my my channel. <laughs> she looks rawly down at her chest, which is probably why I don't have one on. on now that I think about it, I haven't failed to notice that Rin doesn't have her shirt buttoned up either. But I try to keep my eyes strictly locked on hers. It, uh, it's rather evident that she's not a very body-conscious person. My own body, however, is quite conscious of hers right now. She came to wake me up at half past seven today. Can you imagine that? She pauses for a while and glances up at my dumbfounded face. On second thought, you probably can. It's not like that reverse rainbow fish I tried to imagine earlier. That was hard. Well, yes, that seems like a pretty normal time to wake up if you want to get to class in the morning. I'm trying to sound as reasonable as possible to counteract Rin's unreasonable annoyance. Told her to fuck off. <laughs> she gave me the, these meds and told me to take them. I follow her eyes to... Uh, to the night table and then to the pill bottle sitting on top of it. That is the same pills that I shoved down my throat. I pick it up and turn around to look at the label to see what kind of medication Emmy brought. Active ingredient. Cocaine! <laughs> you took... all of these? No. Yes. I've been eating some since there, there's so many of them. Seem to make this thing not so bad. Oh. Actually, I think I'm feeling just fine. Oh, Rin, no, no, that's, you're not supposed to, no. <laughs> Her head lulls round and round. Oh, so is my goddamn late night recordings. Making it look like she was trying to either stretch her neck muscles or possibly pass out. She took several of these pills? Can that be safe? At least it's bound to have some side effects, which I'm afraid I'm witnessing right now. I'm feeling just fine. I am fine. Just someone take, uh, take this buzzing away from my head. I can't think straight. The annoyance, uh, the annoying expression returns to Rin's face. It's like many of those insect things. Or one really big insect thing. With lots of wings. Very, mu very much color in everything. Did I read that right? Am I going through a stroke? Very much color in everything. Yeah, I read that right. I read that right. What's the word for those? Oh, never mind. I remembered. It's butterflies. She smiles slightly at her last observation. Small pause in her monologue is not long enough for me to dare say something that could potentially, but not likely, salvage this discussion. I love butterflies. They are the best animal. Um. Okay. 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 Did you see any on your way here? Hisao. 
She utters my name as an afterthought, possibly to make clear that she is now addressing me instead of just speaking her mind to whoever might be listening. This odd situation has left me speechless, more or less, since uh, the moment Rin first opened her mouth. Now that she herself doesn't seem to have anything else to add, silence fills a small room. It makes me uh, glance around again in an attempt to find something to talk about. Rin's room is about as small as mine. The big window, which takes up most of the wall furthest from the door, opens to the east just like mine. It looks very normal, which strikes me as strange. I expected something more... Different. About a dozen paintings, most of them in Rin's signature abstract style, and a few art posters are taking up uh, most of the, all the available wall space. Well, that's about the, the only real difference between her room and mine. The room is not exactly aesthetic, but it doesn't look like what I'd expect from a girl's room either. A sp faint smell of art, of paint and paper, is floating in the air. It's the same smell as the art room has. Rin isn't too uh, concerned about uh, being tidy, it seems. Everything she owns seems to be arranged in various piles around her room. Your room looks nice. It's an empty sentence one uses to fill empty spaces in conversations. But my wits are failing me pretty hard right now. Yeah. Would you like me to show you these the, the places? She looks down at her half-open shirt quizzically making me inadvertently follow her gaze to her chest. Oh, I guess you, I already did. I can't deny that, no matter how hard I tried to act properly. It is very nice that you came to see me. It makes me feel very... What's the word? You know, the one about things and stuff. Anyway, you came. Rin, Rin's ramblings make me remember that I actually came here for a reason. I did? Hey, uh, about what we talked on Monday on the rooftop, remember? Hmm. The music is fading. The music is dying. Oh, boy. Rin doesn't seem to be exactly attentive right now. Not that she ever is. I plow ahead and get it off my chest anyway. I just wanted to tell you that I'm going to be better from now on. I guess. I hate being pathetic. So I decided I'm not going to be anymore. I guess... That's all. Okay. Isn't that good? The blurry words flow out of her lips slowly and uncontrollably. I'm happy for you, I think. That's what I think. You shouldn't look so sad all the time. I mean, looking sad is fine if you're not sad. But if you look sad like you actually... Sa I'm having a stroke again. You shouldn't look so sad all... Okay, I got that. I mean, looking sad is fine if you are not sad. But you look sad... But you look sad like you actually sad. I don't know if that's a typo. I don't know if that is. I don't know if that's just Rin. My brain can't anymore. I can't. I can't. Oh, my brain. What's happening? What's going on? The left part of my brain's looking back over at the right saying, This is it. This is what kills us. <laughs> That's no good. <laughs> we had to cut the music for that? Are you going on some training camp where they make men out of boys? Or mountaintop meditation? No, I don't think so. Oh, I guess that's fine too. The sentences come out of her mouth and probably her brain... One at a time, with a small pause between each, making her gibberish hard to understand. I just think it seemed like a good idea. Maybe it's not. Rin finishes with one more line, getting to say the last word over herself. An impressive display of what I can only describe as mental shadowboxing. 
Well, I'm embarrassing myself. Might as well tell you that I'm sorry that I said some stupid things to you last week. It's your own business to decide what you're going to do. She seems to not register my words first, but then understanding lights in, in her eyes, and she weighs her head around in a way that could be interpreted as anything. It's okay. I probably said stupid things too. It's just sometimes a bit hard to keep my thoughts the way I like them. They're not very straight. At least most of the time. Not that I want to have them straight. I just wish they were at least in some shape. Round is fine too. But I need more definition. My thoughts are very messy. Messy. What? Oh. She repeats the word melancholy. Then flops lying down on her bed and, and nuzzles her head against her pillow, shutting her eyes. Enough. Tired. You should go. I'm going to sleep again. She opens one of her eyes to look at me. Was it you who likes to look at sleeping girls? Or someone else? You see, in my head right now, I'm looking over at whatever FBI agent or agents that are assigned to monitor my channel. We're looking at each other now, and we're like, what the fuck did we step into? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? It's like, FBI, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what's going on. It's Rin. <laughs> That's all I can say. Maybe there were many of those. I can't remember. I can't remember either. You can stay if you want. No, no, I, I should probably get the fuck out of here. I have homework to do. I stand up from the chair and take a step towards the door. Wait. Her request stops me in my tracks. Not that I intend to scoot off right away. What the fuck? That... I'm sorry... That looks kind of terrifying. It's probably because I'm really not used to seeing Rin smile. It's like when people see me smile. They don't like it when I smile. Because I scare everyone when I smile. <laughs> I'm getting that vibe here too. <laughs> now I'm on the... Uh, now I'm on the other end of it. Now I know what people are referring to. Now I know what they mean. I look over my shoulder at the girl lying on the bed. Again, with the strangest kind of smile on her, her features. She should smile more often. That is, that is definitely not a line that people have told me. Whenever I smile with my default, with my fucking face, people do not look at me and like, you should smile more, Ryan. They're more like, oh my god, dude, stop smiling. You actually look like a serial killer. I can walk you to the door. <sighs> Go to sleep, Ren. Shut your eyes. Go to sleep. I can walk you to the door. It's the, it's the least a gentleman can do. Go to bed, Ren. Rin giggles like a little kid, making me beyond absolutely certain that she took far too much of her cold medication today. I've always wanted to say that. I'm sorry. Well, fine. I'm. I'm. I guess I'm glad I could help you live out one fantasy. No, 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 Rin, sit, go back into bed, S sleep, child, go. <laughs> no, <laughs> she's going to actually walk me out. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Slowly, with difficulty, Rin first rises to a sitting position again. Then she stands up with even more difficulty and s more slowly still. As if Gaia by some masculine uh, uh, autumn automation my eyes instantly lower to the curve of her thighs and the striped panties 
At, at which point, my uh, my manners forced me to lift my gaze back to, to Rin's eye level. It, it's almost getting almost too hard to do that. Rin is standing, although barely. It looks like she has trouble keeping her usually decent balance. Again, probably a side effect of the medica of the medicine. She takes an unsteady step towards me, then another smaller one. Uh, she notices it's, it's not a good idea to try and take big steps. I, <clears throat> oh god, excuse me. I feel my muscles tense and prepare to catch her in as she falls. If she falls down. Okay. All right. Uh She uh, Girl, you have no arms yet. You have left me defenseless. She manages to take two more steps before she falls against me. To my surprise, neither her downward momentum nor our slight height difference are able to stop Ren pressing her heart-shaped lips squarely against mine. As our lips uh, part after a confusing moment of nothing but a taste of Rin, I look down at her, trying to find some explanation for this bewildering event. The effect smile of a madman bronze on Rin's lips again, and... I wonder if I will remember this tomorrow. I'm absolutely stumped how to respond. Rin takes a step backwards, separating her body from mine, and making me only now realize that... that we are even connected in the first place. The second step is actually a fall backwards, luckily straight onto her bed. The soft flood Rin's thin body makes against the mattress breaks the silence. I move quickly over to see if she hurt herself, only to be met with the, the peaceful face of dreaming. Rin sleeps. She's lying diagonally across the bed, somehow managing to have simultaneously fallen asleep while standing up, and falling down in a way that she didn't injure herself. Fool's luck. Rin's luck. I tuck Rin in, covering her with the sheets as well as I can. She feels very light, even though I'm not that strong. I stand up to look at her. The hollow shaped face, the dark eyelashes shut against uh, the feverish uh, cheeks, the slender body covered with pale sheets. Rin sleeps. A conflict. No. Conflicts. Plural churn inside of me. I think about calling a nurse to keep an eye on her, but decide against it. After taking more glance at her peaceful face, I decide that she'll be fine. I do pocket the remaining pills, though. I, actually, smart. I exit the room and close the door soundlessly behind me. I exhale deeply, only now realize that I had held my breath for the better part of a minute. Taking a moment to relax, I try to calm uh, down my heart, racing like a jackrabbit. It's just us waking up. I actually thought something was going to happen. Are we still in Act 2? Good lord, man! I had trouble getting to sleep that night. Yeah, I, I imagine, man, it's not every day an armless chick doped out of her mind of pain pills fall kisses into you. I, 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 I briefly consider skipping class, but remind myself that I was supposed to be a stronger person now. I get up like a good boy and put on my uniform, then make my way to the main school building without eating breakfast. 
I said in my seat, classroom 33, waving and agreeing to Mission Shizune like I do every morning, and let the day wash over me. The afternoon classes are always longer than those in the morning. This is true regardless of whether I count it by the minute or by the number of doodles drawn in my notebooks. Today I'm especially distracted, and as I keep thinking about Rin. Did I manage to properly tell her that, that I want to get better? Did she understand a word of what I was saying? I think about the kiss we shared and what it means. She was so out of her mind, maybe it means nothing. But we've been getting closer lately. What does that mean? I think about Rin more and more nowadays. I wonder if she thinks about me. The ringing of the bells makes me flinch, and then realize that I haven't been paying attention during the, the later half of class at all. I look at these sort of sketches traveling up and down the margins of my notebook, the only thing I got done in the last hour. Feeling vaguely disappointed in myself, I pack up and get to the hallway. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Rin is standing right outside the door, her presence stopping me in my tracks as soon as I, I spot her. Her posture is relaxed as always, but I suddenly feel like I, I just ate a crowbar! It's weirdly specific. I'm having a hard time meeting her gaze. She doesn't seem to have any trouble looking at me, but those dark eyes are making me feel flustered for no reason. It's hard to look straight at her, so I turn my face away a little. I don't know uh, what one should say in this kind of situation. Most people say hello, Cassell. Then again, I really, I rarely know what to say to Rin in any given situation. Uh, hi. Hello. I try to get rid of the awkwardness in my voice and invoke a more natural way of speaking. I suddenly worry about where I should put my hands. It feels like they're in the, the way somehow. Uh, how are you feeling? You were pretty out of it yesterday. I'm okay. What do you mean, yesterday? You don't remember? She tilts her head to the uh, side like a bird, looking somewhat confused. Remember what? I have a pretty bad memory. About yesterday. What about yesterday? I came to see you, and... I don't remember that kind of thing happening. She really doesn't remember? I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but I feel disheartened all the same. I remember that I promised to show you one place, though. Did that happen for real? Maybe I, I just think I remember that and I really don't. No, that was real too. Okay. Do you want to go? Now? Yeah. Well, sure, why not? Is it far? It's not. Well, we will find out what this magical place is next time, ladies and gentlemen. If you had any fun whatsoever listening to me ramble on, losing my mind, you know the deal. Like the video and subscribe. Follow the Facebook page. Keep up the news and the content. Hop on the Discord to hang out with other like-minded deranged individuals. And keep spreading the word about these adventures and about the, the channel as a whole. Only through the power of you guys can the Empire grow into something beautiful. And now, until the next time, stay awesome out there, guys. Good night, Don.